Welcome everyone to Hope Church. Let's all stand together. Hear the call to worship from Psalm 34. I will extol the Lord at all times. His praise will always be on my lips. I will glory in the Lord. Let the afflicted hear and rejoice. Glorify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together now and forever. Amen. Let's confess our faith together with the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits on the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Amen.
great, your love was greater. What could separate us now? What a wonderful name it is. What a wonderful name it is. The name of Jesus Christ, our King. What a wonderful name it is. Nothing compares to this. What a wonderful name it is. The name of Jesus. What a beautiful name it is. What a beautiful name it is. The name of Jesus Christ the King. What a beautiful name it is. Nothing compares to this. What a beautiful name it is. The name of Jesus. Thank you. 
Praise the Lord, praise the Lord from the heavens. Praise Him in the heights above. Praise Him, all His angels. Praise Him, all His heavenly hosts. Praise Him, sun and moon. Praise Him, all you shining stars. Praise Him, you highest heavens and you waters above the sky. Psalm 148. Thank you, God. We gather here today to praise your name and worship you. We are created to worship you and glorify your name. That's our main purpose, that is our desire, and that is our life. God, we need you. Every day we have to fight with the enemy who is always trying to distract us from you. He divides our relationship with you, our friends, and our family, and we suffer from it. He is always whispering lies to create doubt fears and bitterness. Even today, some of us have come with heavy hearts, full of worries 
and fears, distracted by the things of this world. But I pray that no matter what state we came to church, you will help us to lay it down and be able to focus on you today. To hear your voice, to be touched by your spirit, to be transformed by your grace. We have already won the battles. So please break these lies and replace them with the truth and help us surrender to you so that we can worship you with all our hearts. God, thank you for blessing us throughout this year. It is already December. Please help us to remember how blessed we are, how much grace we have received this year from you, Jesus. When you think about you, all you can say is thank you. Thank you for your, our daily life. Thank you for our jobs. Thank you for our health. Thank you for our parents and children. Thank you for our friends. Thank you for Hope Church. And thank you for House Church. And thank you, Jesus, our Savior, who died for us and saved us from our sins. We love you, Jesus. I pray in Jesus' name. Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to Hope Church. Let's take time to say hello to one another. Hi. Say hello to those sitting around you, behind you. Hello, Ian. Special shout out to Dapu. It's his birthday today. Elder Dapu, another year older, another year wiser, I said. Happy birthday to Poo. Well, welcome everyone. As you can see on the screen, we are in the season of Advent. I feel like it totally snuck up on us. This year went super fast and we are in December. Crazy, right? And so today's the first Sunday of the month. We will be having communion later together. Um, but yes, today's the first Sunday season of Advent, first Sunday of Advent, and the theme is hope. We don't have many announcements, just that, as we had said, next Sunday is our congregational meeting. So that's next Sunday, December 10th. It will be immediately following our worship service. So if you all just stay seated, um, I don't think we're going to break. We'll just have the, um, we'll have the benediction, and then we're going to try to go right into the uh, meeting. We won't eat snacks or, or have refreshments until after the congregational meeting. And so if you could just stay, and then the two things on the agenda uh, you can see on there is the election of deacons and elders to start their service next year, 2024. Also to review and approve the 2024 budget for Hope Church. Those two items are up for vote and will be um, on the agenda next Sunday. Uh, it is a new month, as I said, and we are switching, highlighting a different family, a missions partner. So the month of December is going to be Sue and Christina Kim. They are in Bangkok, Thailand. As you know, Pastor Q went out there very recently and was able to meet up with them, eat with them, and see them. You can see how big the kids have gotten. My goodness, when I saw the picture, especially Timmy, look how big they are. But those are the prayer requests. All this information is up on our website as well, always. Um, they will be highlighted and join us next Wednesday. Remember, the second Wednesday of the month is our HOP uh, prayer meeting on Zoom with the highlighted missions partners. So Sue and Christina will be joining us on Zoom from Bangkok, Thailand to um, update us and pray with us. And that's next Wednesday. So put that on your calendar. Um, I believe that is all. So at this time, we will have um, giving uh, time of worship. So we have our offering basket up here as well as through the Church Center app.
right, let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord. We stand before you in awe of your goodness over us, and we declare, we profess how much we love you and how good you are. You are the good, good Father. We lift up this offering to you, collected this day. Father, we ask that, Lord, that you would help us to be good stewards of all that you have given to us. Help us to build your kingdom and to pour not just our finances, but all our talents, God, our resources, our time, our energy, our prayers, and our love into the things that concern you, God, the things of you. So, Father, we love you and we thank you. We ask, Lord, that you would draw near to those who are are, um, suffering, especially those who are sick among us, whether it is through um, illnesses such as cancer or even the common cold, God, or even allergies. We pray, Father, that you would help to bring relief to them and that there would be a perfect shalom of well-being over your people, God, especially during this season as we close out 2023. We lift up our missions partners, the Kim Kims. We ask, Lord God, that your hand be upon them in Bangkok and all that they are doing in your name. Strengthen them, God. Um, keep them safe, Lord, and provide for their every need. Father, we thank you and we love you. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right, kids, you may be excused to go downstairs, but you will be back to do communion with us later. God is good. God is good. God is good. Okay. Somebody wanted to stay and hear my message rather than going downstairs. <laughs> Just to think that uh, uh, today is the first Sunday of the new calendar year for church. Usually in the church calendar, it begins with Advent season. And today is the first Sunday, and there are four Sundays leading up to Christmas and that begins the a church calendar. And a Jewish calendar begins with Rosh Hashanah and usually in September, but church-wide, our calendar begins in, in December, usually December 1st and four Sundays before Christmas, Advent season. In the midst of all that, you know, and this whole week, this is not my part of my message, but whole week, the, the Ephesians chapter 5, verse 15 through 17 has been resonating with me. Just wanted to mention a little bit before I share the word. That Ephesians chapter 5, verse 15 through 17 says, Therefore, be careful how you walk, how you live, not as unwise men, but as wise, making the most of your time or redeeming your timing or redeem and seize the God-given opportunities because the days are evil. So then do not be foolish, but understand what the will of the Lord is. To live our lives in, and before God with wisdom, knowing the times we're living. It is a season. This is a time that things are evil in this world. Therefore, we need to live wisely, making the most of our time, redeeming our time, restoring our time. And he says, do not be foolish, but understand God's will for you. Walk in our life according to his purpose and will for us in our lives. And, not, and, and so this was, you know, maybe it's because I'm getting old, older. I'm not old yet. I'm older. Some of these passages are hitting me really powerfully. They're making most of your time. Let's, let's read the word of God. Today's, uh, let us rise for the reading of the word. Today's word is from Luke chapter 16, verse 19 through 31. Luke 16, 19 to 31. We have an ESV version, English Standard Version up there. You can follow along with it. If you really want, you can follow along in your own Bible. Whether it's by the, your Bible itself or the app, you can do that. There was a rich man who was clothed in purple and fine linen and who feasted sumptuously every day. And his gate was lit. And at his gate was laid a poor man named Lazarus, covered with sores, who desired to be fed with what fell from the rich man's table. Moreover, even the dogs came and licked his sores. The poor man died and was carried by the angels to Abram's bosom. 
Abram's side. The rich man also died and was buried. Look at verse 23. And in Hades, hell, in hell, being in torment, he, the rich man, lifted up his eyes and saw Abraham far off and Lazarus at his side. And he called out, Father Abraham, have mercy on me and send Lazarus to dip the end of his finger in water and cool my tongue, for I am in anguish in this flame. But Abram said, Child, remember that in your lifetime, in you in your lifetime receive you your good things, and Lazarus in, in like manner bad things. But now he is comforted here, and you are in anguish. And besides all this, between us and you, a great chasm has been fixed in order that those who would pass from here to you may not be able, and none may cross from there to us. And he said, Then I beg you, Father, to send him to my father's house, for I have five brothers, so that he may warn them, lest they also come into this place of torment. But Abraham said, Abraham said, they have Moses and the prophets. Let them hear them. And he said, Father Abraham, but if someone goes to them from the dead, they will repent. He said, Abraham said to him, if they do not hear Moses and the prophets, neither will they be convinced if someone should rise from the dead. Here is a teaching of our Lord Jesus. Receive it as such. Amen. You may be seated. Let us pray. Father, we come right now in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Father, Lord, you said if two or three gather in the name of Jesus, you will be with us in your manifest presence. We come today, God. We worship you. We look to you, God. We honor you. We come before you. We say, here we I am. Here I stand, God. We want to see your face, hear your voice, know your ways, know your heart. Walk in your grace, God. We honor you. We want our lives to give you glory. Father, we ask right now, as you come to your word, we pray for brevity, with clarity. We ask for revelation of your heart, your truth that transforms, your word that encourages and comforts. Help us to walk in your way. We love you, God, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. We pray, amen. Sometime, somewhere, I think everyone asks, thinks about what does afterlife, what does life beyond this life look like? Often we think about what does eternity look like? What does, what does life beyond this life look like? Sometimes we wonder, and sometimes we have weird ideas, weird thoughts. But you know, if there was any place in the Bible that talks about heaven and hell, more in details than any other place is today's text. Today's text. So we want to look at what Jesus says. Out of all the people, Jesus, the Lord, has a right to talk about heaven more than anybody else. He, he died and resurrected. He's been to hell and, and he's, our God knows all things and he has a right. He has all the credentials to speak about the life hereafter. After life and everything. Now let me begin. And so, you know, just a couple of things as it begin. I don't know if anybody noticed. I skipped a few verses. You know, we are, we've been going through the Gospel of Luke, chapter 6, Gospel of Luke. And last week we ended at chapter 16, verse 15. I jumped to verse 19. I sort of skipped the verse 16 through 18. I don't know if I'm going to come back to that or not, but... I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to jump right into verse 19 because there is a progression of thought here. Je last week we saw how Jesus told the people parable about the unjust steward, unrighteous steward. And we saw how Jesus told people about, told people, especially addressed uh, Pharisees and said, talked about money. You cannot serve both God and money. We are stewards of all that God has and has poured upon us. 
and the and the use of our money should be for eternal purposes and that using the jesus said use your worldly wealth to gain friends and be faithful what god has entrusted to you being faithful stewards and now you know and, and it ended the whole passage ended with Pharisees snickering at Jesus and sneering at Jesus, thinking that, what, are, what, are you, what are you talking about? You don't know what you're talking about, kind of thing. And Jesus responded to them, you, you're good at justifying yourself, but what you think is valuable, God does not. Now Jesus tells them another parable in light of their response. It begins by saying, there was a man, a rich man. Let me stop right here. You know, and you know, one of the, as, as I study the word of God, something really catches me. In chapter 15 through 16, Jesus has been telling stories, parables about parables begin with there was a man, there was a shepherd, there was a father who had two sons, right? And and there was a rich man in chapter 16 who had a you know the steward who was wasting his money. Now here there is there was a man, a rich man. How rich was he? He was so rich, he was wearing purple. It doesn't mean anything to us, but in those days, purple was very expensive to come by because it comes from a, uh, obtained for shellfish murex. And so it was royal color, and it was really expensive to have royal, a purple thing. This is why Lydia, one of the first converts in Europe through Apostle Paul, was a uh, cell of purple. Purple color was you know, expensive. Not only that, he was wearing linen, the fine woman linen, which is considered the height of luxury those days. And not only that, he was feasting. He was celebrating every day, having party every day. You know, the thing, in that word that celebrated, that, word, that is the word the father says about the prodigal son. Let's have party, let's celebrate. Because my son was lost, came back. Now here, this guy is every day celebrating, and he was having party every day. And also it says that he was living in a mansion with the giant gate. How do I know? Next verse. Next verse 20 says, at his gate. That word gate here is, talks about a huge gate, like a gate at the temple. At his gate, now, the now second person is mentioned here. That guy was rich. He was having party every day, very, you know, eating well. He's wearing good things. Well, now this is a rich guy. And then Jesus in the story says there's another man. He's, he was a beggar. He was a poor guy. He was dropped up at the gate of the rich man. Why? So he can beg. His friend probably dropped him up every morning in that gate. He'll be begging. His name was Lazarus, and he was covered with his sores. His body was sores everywhere, things oozing out of his body, and a pus and everything. There was no anti antibiotics those days, so things are oozing all over his body. And he said he was, he was so hungry, desiring to eat, the scraps that fall upon under the table, right? On the rich man's, that rich man's table. By the way, that, that, see, this is where when you study the Bible a little bit, some of you, you study the words, do some word studies. Here is not just a little scraps he's talking about, not just crumbs that falls off. What happened is those days when you're rich, when you're eating, you didn't have napkins. When, when your hand is a little wet, you take a piece of bread, you will wipe it and, and throw it on the ground. That's what he's talking about here. He wanted to eat some of those. It meaning he couldn't eat those things. Not only that, dogs came and licked his wounds. Couldn't move, and he was there. As a, and these animals came, the dogs came and licked. This dog is not a pet. These are wild dogs. This is a stray dog can be very violent. These dogs came and began licking his body and licking his soul and whatnot. And this is the desperate condition, right? There is a rich guy who's having pate every day, and he's a... You know, there's a poor man by the gate. There's one thing that you hear, one thing that really struck me. Do you know the name of the rich guy? No. 
But this, here, this beggar has a name. Lazarus. And you know, and out of all the parables Jesus taught, I was taught, taught and said, nobody has ever named except this guy. This poor beggar is named Lazarus. I, I didn't know how good this name Lazarus was. Not only Lazarus, not the same guy who, got, who was you know, raised from the dead, not the brother of Mary and Bethany, not that guy. This is another Lazarus, because Lazarus was a very common name. Lazarus is a short for Eliezer. That means God has helped. This guy's name Lazarus means God has helped this guy. But yet he was in that condition. And then, you know, you know, even in the simple story, Jesus says, God knows that beggar's name. The rich man is unnamed. God said, this one, maybe not, not, under, not significant in this world, but God says, I know that guy's name. His name is Lazarus. Now, Jesus set up the story. This is a story. Now, some, some scholars say, Bible never said this is a parable. This could be a true story. A true rich man and a lad, God, somebody named Lazarus. We do not know whether it's a true story or parable. Either way, it doesn't, it doesn't make any difference. It is still Jesus using this story to tell us about the kingdom of God. God is good. Wasn't that good? I love the name. And I found, the, while, while I was preparing for the message, I found the song. He knows my name. The new song. God knows my name. I love that God knows my name. You know, and you know, and uh, there's a verse in Hebrew chapter 9, verse 27, just says, people are destined to die once. After that, face judgment. Listen here. In this story, Jesus tells, rich man and the poor beggar both died. We all die. This is truth. No, no matter how rich you are, no matter how poor you are, we all die. Death comes to all. Then it doesn't end there. There is a judgment that comes after that. That's what people were saying. After that, you face judgment. There is a final exam. You know, you know who I'm talking about. There is a final exam. There's time of reckoning, time of you know, a final exam is not the, the time just so that you know you fail, whatever it's about time of rewards. So how you have done. And one of the things the Bible seems clear is that. This life does not end with just living here. It, we, our life does not end just dying. Our life begins anew when we die. We, and we enter into eternal existence either with God or far away from God. And the story continues. Jesus raised a rich guy. The, the poor man is now, he says, is now is with Abram's bosom, right? In verse 20, 23, and in Hades, or hell, being in torment, he lifted up his eyes and saw Abraham far up and Lazarus at his side. There's two men, two different existences on earth. Now they come to eternity and they are in two different places. Death changed everything. Often does. That changed everything in this life. One was rich, had everything he wanted. He lived for his, what he wanted in his life. The other lived a poor, miserable life. But and, and as you enter eternity, these things changed. There it talks about there is heaven, there is Abram's bosom, and Hades. King James Version translated as hell. There is Abram's bosom, and Hades, hell. Why Abram's bosom? Abram's bosom or side is a common Jewish term at the time of Christ to, that for heaven. That's what they do. It's a common phrase at the time to refer to heaven. Why Abram's bosom? Because the Jewish people face their root back to Abraham because they expected to go to heaven because they were descendants of Abraham. They thought this is why for them going to be with Abraham's bosom men being in heaven with God, being with their ancestor, their father Abraham. But the other places, Hades, 
or the hell, and the word has the meaning in the Greek meaning has place of torment, and sometimes seen as a place of waiting for the final judgment. Here's a question. But why did the rich man go to hell? Why did the rich man go to hell? That's a really, the, the, the question that rises in me. Why did the rich man go to hell? Think about that. If we, at one glance, we think that he went to hell because he was rich. That's not true. Abram was rich. King David was rich, and a lot of saints were rich. It's not because you're rich that they went to hell. It's not. You know, and I think I'd rather put it this way. How can, how could a rich man, considering himself as a son of Abraham, a blessed member of God's people, be so heartless? Let me step in. I want to think about this a little bit. This rich man, I believe, it was, was not an atheist. Probably he, he believed in God. Probably he was, you know, really a, you know, uh, he went to synagogues, he went to temple, and he probably was a Pharisee. He was, a, in, in our term, he went to church every Sunday. He was religious, and he had a probably conservative right theology but yet you know his life shows he's living in riches yet at his gate there is a poor beggar in that desperate condition and you see there was no concern in him about that person at all the true reason this man this rich man went to hell is not because he was rich but because he rejected the word of god he disregarded the word of God. And all the Ten Commandments, all the word of God, prophets and Moses talked about full, talked about loving God with all your heart, soul, and mind, and strength, the great commandment, and love your neighbor as yourself. He missed the heart of God. He disobeyed the word. He didn't take the word of God seriously. But word of God says, word of God says clearly, Looking at the word of God said clearly that uh, uh, our hearts should reflect the heart of God. And, and here's, a, here's a quote that I found, not my word. And as with rich men, our use of our wealth in relation to the needs of our neighbors reveal our spiritual state. Isn't that good? It's how we live our lives, how we use our world in light of the needs of others around us reveals what's in our heart, the condition of our spirit. If my life is all about me and what I want, having enjoyment for myself is all about self-centered life. It may show something about where my heart is, where my faith is. Remember what Jesus said in, in, in the in and one of the one of the greatest story parable and, and really about end times, the sheep and the goat. Remember, Jesus told the story, and the and, and really I don't know, it's a parable, but the, it's, Jesus said in in the last day he will separate the people in the two camps, the sheep on the right and the goats on the left. Goats are not the greatest of all time. Okay, it's not the goats are no good here. Okay, it's the, 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 it's the, the, the sheep and the goats. Right? And, and, and Jesus says actually in Matthew 25, verse 41 to 46, speaking to the goats, those are judged. And, and then he will say to those on his left, Depart from me, you curse, into the eternal fire. Prepare for the devil and his angel. Listen carefully. Jesus said, Eternal fire is not prepared for people, it's prepared for devil and the fallen angels. You know, that hell is not a place God prepared for people. It is a place God prepared for the devil and the fallen angels. But they are going there because, for I was hungry and you gave me no drink. I was thirsty and you gave me no drink. No, no, I'm sorry. I read the wrong line here. 
I was hungry and you gave me no food. I was thirsty and you gave me no drink. I was stranger and you did not welcome me. Naked and you did not clothe me. Sick in prison, you did not visit me. Then they also were answer saying, Lord, when did we see you hungry or thirsty or stranger or naked or sick or in prison and did not minister to you? Then he, Jesus says, and he will answer to them saying, truly I say to you, as you did not do it to one of the, one of the least of these brothers of mine, you did not do it, you did not do it to me. And Jesus, this is, this is Jesus talks about it and, and time, and, and time when God separates the nations. And one of the ways it, it separates our heart, how we love, how we care for the, those are poor and the sick hurting around us. That be because it reveals our hearts, reveals our hearts, where our heart is. And verse 46, and these will go away into eternal punishment but the righteous into eternal life. See, if we stop right there, if the story stopped right there, we know he's talking about the rich man and how he didn't, you know, how he handled his wealth not rightly, how he abused, how he didn't care for the poor and how God judged him. But yet, story goes on. There's more than that here. And he, the rich man, in a in called out, in torment, called out, Father Abraham, have mercy on me and send Lazarus to dip the end of his finger in water and cool my tongue, for I am in anguish in this flame. But Abraham said, Child, remember that you in your lifetime receive your good things, and Lazarus in, in like manner bad things in this life. But now he is comforted here while you are in anguish. This reminds me of what Jesus said. In one of the sermons Jesus gave in the plains, in Luke chapter 6, this is what Jesus said. Blessed are you who are poor, for yours is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you who are hungry now, for you shall be satisfied. Verse 24, and Jesus goes to say, Woe to you who are rich, for you have received your consolation now. Isn't that what Jesus is saying here? The rich, the man, now he's in agony, and the one, the poor Lazarus, is now with Abraham, not because he was poor, but because, as his name says, he, in his place, still trusted in God, believed in God. His name was God has helped. God has helped. And, and, and furthermore, he says there is a great chasm. And, he, and Abraham says this. Abraham says, besides all this, between us and you, a great chasm has been fixed in order that those who would, would pass from here to you may not pass. I don't know why would anybody want to go heaven to hell. Only reason may be, I see, if you see somebody in pain, and we want to help them out. You say, you cannot pass. And, and, and none may cross from there to us, from the Hades to here. You are not able. No one can cross. It is fixed. Then the rich man begs. And then he said, then I beg you, Father, to send him, Lazarus, to my father's house. For I have five brothers. So, I, so that he may warn them lest they also come into this place of torment. He said, I don't want my brothers to come into place. Please send Lazarus. Maybe may, let him come back to life and he can go and warn my brothers to not to be where I am. They can repent and they will not be here. Right? And the Abraham response was and this way, but Abram said, they, they had Moses and the prophet let them hear them. And he said, no, Father Abraham, but if someone goes to them from the dead, they will repent. Abram said, they had Moses and 
prophets. They have the Bible. They have the Old Testament, the whole Bible with them. They, the word of God is what they should listen and obey. Be points to the salvation that is in Christ Jesus. But he said, but if, but then, you know, he said, but he, they will not listen. But if somebody who's dead come back to life and comes and warn them, they will believe. Verse 31, Abraham said to him, if they do not believe, hear the Moses and the prophets, neither will they con be convinced if someone should rise from the dead. The whole story ends with this rich man in agony saying, I want my brothers not to come here and asking for that. And so this story speaks not only about money, not only about mercy, but something further than that. Jesus, in this parable, tells us about more, about more, about more than mercy and love for our neighbor. He also speaks about heaven and hell here, Hades, the afterlife. There are six things that I learned about afterlife here. Six things. This is not me. I am borrowing shameless from one of the speakers I listened to, Alan Solomon, who was a, a founding pastor, uh, one of the pastors of McLean Bible Church. This is from his material, okay? I'm letting you know. I, said, I, I am not pleasurized. I'm letting you know this is where I, where I got from. I love this message on this thing. I thought it was good for us. Number one, in afterlife, when he, after we died and after he come before God, we they're, one of the first things is we keep our identity. Lazarus was still Lazarus. Rich men are still rich men. Abram was still Abram. I don't know how he recognized Abraham. I don't know how. Maybe he had a name tag that says a stick that says Abraham. I don't know. Somehow he knew there was an Abraham. And, and Lazarus, the last, he noticed you, you keep your identity. Somehow people think that when we die, we'll just disappear, whatever. We lose our consciousness. That's not what Jesus says. Here you see, where even after you die, where after life, you would have your identity. Second thing. Number two, what it says. We have feelings. Here you see, he was in agony. And, and Lazarus being comforted, he was in agony. He's in torment, and he has feelings. He has, he has, he feels pain. He feels anguish. He feels, there's a feeling there. Third thing that I know after life, there's one of the third things that I learned about this is three, you can remember things. He remembered, even with that he had five brothers. He remembered about last, he remembered. There's a memory there. There are some people think that when you die, it's like you, you just disappear or like a candle bone blown out. No conscious, no. Jesus said, you remember. Is that a good thing? Or bad thing that you remember? At least to those in hell. It is a terrible thing, isn't it? They'll remember somebody came and told them about Christ. They rejected it. It'll be terrible. To those who are in that place, it will be terrible. They remember. Fourth thing, we, we keep our identity, we have feelings, we can remember, and that they are, the fourth thing is there are only two places to go, not many places, two places to go. Adam's bosom, heaven, or Hades, or hell. No, no other option, there's only two places you can go. And, and, and the thing is, God determines where you go. Place you go. It's not like some I can and it, so there's two places you can go. But for fifth, hell is a place of torment. It's a place, fiery place. Place of torment. Some you know, I, I heard some people say, you know what? I would rather go to hell. All my friends will be there, we'll have a party all, all the time. Look. You know, when you look at this, what Jesus says, there's no mention of anybody else around him. It seems like he's alone. He's in pain alone. And he's in pain. 
It's a place of torment. It's a place of fire. And, and, you can, and, and this is the place he is in. I mean, it, it, some of you think that, oh, I'll just go ahead and be with my friends, whatever. Those, get that out of your mind. This is not what, what Jesus says about the, what life after life look like. Finally, one's destiny is once, it's, when, when, once you die, once you are before God, it is unalterable. You cannot fix it. You cannot cross. You are as the way you have set. You cannot change. You see, in a, in a, a rich man asked Abraham, have mercy on me. And Abraham does not give any mercy. In this life, in this life, we ask for God's mercy, and there is mercy from God every time. But there, they, once, once you pass there, there is no mercy. There is no mercy. Mercy is here, not there. Your eternity is fixed. You cannot be changed. So important, the most important question, so what? What does this mean to us? What does it mean to us? Few things I didn't I thought. As with rich men, our use of our wealth in relation to the need of our neighbors reveal our spiritual state. You see, now so then the question is, what does your life reveal? Does it reveal that you know God? Does it reveal that you have heart of God? You have tasted his goodness. Does it reveal that you have received his mercy? That his mercy is part of your life? That's one. Second thing is this. More important, are you ready for eternity? Are you ready for eternity? Every man, every man and woman dies, and there will be judgment. There you'll see, you stand before God for judgment. There's only one way. The cross of our Lord Jesus, because there's no other way. Think about this. This week we begin the Advent season. If, if we, just, we just die and just disappear, there's, there's just that. If that, that's the case, I don't think Jesus would have come and died on the cross. The reason he came and died on the cross is because heaven is real. Hell is real. Eternal choice is real. And this is real. This is why he went all the way to the cross, shed his blood to redeem us, give us life. Amen? This is why he came. The heaven is real. Hell is real. Our life, how we live, who we trust in has consequences. If you have never came to Christ as your Lord and Savior. They will embrace him as the Lord and Savior. You need to run to him. You need to find life and hope that is in him. Jesus Christ didn't, our Lord Jesus didn't, didn't just come to make our life a little better or alternative way of living or bless us. He came because we are perishing. Without him we will perish. And we will not only perish, we will, we will perish eternally in the place of judgment. He came to save us, restore us. That's what Christmas is about. That's what the cross is about. That's why our God became, and, and human being came to us to die on the cross, to ransom us, restore, restore us. That's why Christ came. That's why we celebrate communion. His sacrifice tells you, tells us that eternity is real. Heaven is real and hell is real. And that our lives, how, how we live, how we trust, who we trust, makes all the difference in the world. Third thing is this. If you already know Jesus, if you are a follower of Christ, if you're a child of God, the reality of heaven and hell would spur us. We will really Energize, we will motivate, motivate us to share his love with those around who are lost. 
who do not know God, who are perishing without knowing they're perishing. It cannot be that I can take it nonchalantly as if not, it, not, it doesn't matter. I thought about this. I remember one, you know, olden days, long time ago, when I, one, early days when I used to do youth retreat, before grace retreat days. Every which of you have a little bit of skit. We do a little skit, you know, or the kids will have youth group kids. The students have a team, a groups, make a little skit. And I remember one skit really marked my heart, broke my heart. And I still remember it's up to 30 some years ago. I remember this youth group came and I think there were eight or 10 there. They put their chairs in two rows and, the, and, they, were, and they were, they, they have, you know, I would love to have all the, the 10 of youth come and bring their chairs and sit in two rows. But they were on the, on, on the, you can imagine with me, they're on this row and they were acting like somebody, somebody the driver driving. So the, the idea is that they were in a bus together. They're going somewhere and they were singing songs. They're going to so maybe retreat or something. They're driving and then they had accident. They all fall off and they apparently all die. And the next scene is that they stand before God and that they are standing where they will go. And, and, and so there is that somebody come and say, and, and they go to heaven. And, and then finally there's a guy comes at the end. And he, and God said, you are going here. Why am I with them? No, you're going this way. And then says, why? Because you do not know Christ Jesus as your Lord and Savior. And this guy looks at the friends out there. Did you know about this? Did you know about that? You didn't tell me that this is the way to go to heaven. I remember, the, I remember the, the skit they did. And one of the guys said, you know, I was so worried that you may get offended at me, that I may lose you as a friend. And this friend says, now you lost me for forever. It broke my heart. I sort of saw that, how you know, in the fear of my friend not liking me, I don't get to share about God's love and grace. Eternity is a stake or not. And I remember that that skit really hit me and, and you know, ripped me. And I, I, didn't, I couldn't forget for some 30 some years. Listen, I don't want to be in the place where my coworker, my family member, my friend, or my mom, or my dad, somebody that I know that I love, will say, you knew about this, but you didn't tell me? I lived with you, I walked with you, you didn't tell me? You didn't tell me about this? I don't want to be in the place where they would say, I didn't know, and they, they didn't tell me. I don't want to be in the place there. And I want to be a place where, you know what? I want, to be, and I want to be remembered as, I was in your face. Even when you say no, I was in your face tell you, come on, this is important. This is life and death. There is hell and heaven. There is no other way but Jesus Christ. I want to be remembered as one who told my loved ones that they have to come to Christ. I don't want to be remembered as those who were so afraid to tell them and afraid to share them about Christ and the salvation and hope that is in Christ Jesus. You see, you don't have to go overseas to be a missionary. Today, you know, I want to, you know, I, actually I saw, I saw somebody did it, but this is not my idea, somebody else's idea, Lon Solomon's idea. Again, I'll tell you where they came from, okay? I, I want to encourage you when you go home, why right on the top of your door, put a, a door to go out, put a sign, I am entering mission field. You don't have to go overseas to be a missionary. When you walk out the door, everyone you meet, everyone you, everyone you walk with, they are your mission field. You want to tell them about love of God, love of Christ Jesus. And you don't even have to leave your home to be a missionary. In your home, you need to be a missionary. That your family member, your brother, sister, everybody in your family, relatives, need to know about Christ Jesus. Salvation that is in Christ Jesus. You are entering 
mission field. The reality of heaven and hell. Reality of this and his truth and salvation demands and calls us to share his love. Because I'm not ashamed of the gospel, Apostle Paul said, for it is power unto salvation to those who believe, first to Jews and to Gentiles. The gospel is power unto salvation to those who believe. You are entering the mission field. Let me have the praise team come. There's only two places, go. There's two places. Eternity. Where will you stand? Where would you be? You see, one of the things that uh, Pastor Mimi and I as Hope Church and Leadership, we spent three years, three plus years, we really transitioned. We really re transformed our church into how church is that. It's because we believe that gospel, sharing the gospel with those around and carrying the Great Commission is ultimate calling and important to us. Christian life is not just living a comfortable life and not just have happy, blessed life. It is about carrying his mission. This is what our church is about. This is what our church is about. Amen? Because God so loved the world that he gave his one and only begotten son. So whosoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal everlasting life. That's why Jesus Christ came. This is why we are here. This is why we stand and worship our God. He is a wonderful God. Our heart is burning and our heart is just stirred. His love for the lost. He came to seek and save the lost. That's who we are, who, what we are about. That's who our, what our hearts are beating our, in our vein and blood will flow that passion and love for those around, those are lost. Amen. Father, we come before you today, God. May we be never ashamed of sharing your truth. Never be ashamed of your gospel that saves. Father God, I pray today, God, that, uh, that our lives matter before you as we trust in you, God, and you call us, and that, that we have eternity with you, God, in Christ Jesus. I pray today, God, you'll grant us courage and strength, heart, God, to share your love with all those around we may, we may, our lives will really reflect your beauty and glory, your fragrance, your love and mercy, God. And everywhere, God, you will be honored and glorified. We love you, God. We honor you, God. We are yours. Send me. Send us, God. You came to seek and save the lost. It's your heart, God. Help us to love as you love. We honor you in the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Blessing of Holy Spirit as we get ready for the communion.
As we said, today is the first Sunday of Advent. It is a time, a season of waiting and of expectation. As we celebrate communion today, we remember and we also anticipate that God sent his son, his only son, our Lord Jesus, born to us as a baby to be the light of the world then, 2000, over 2,000 years ago, but also today. He is still the light of the world. He was the hope of the world then, and he is the hope of the world today. And so each time we celebrate communion and we come to this table, we remember what he has done and that he has come to us. But we also look forward to and anticipate that he will come again. So let's all stand together. We know that our Lord Jesus, on the night of his arrest, that um, he sat and had his uh, Passover meal with his closest friends, his disciples. He took the bread that was on the table, and after giving thanks to God, he took it, he broke it, and he gave it to his disciples, his friends, saying, take, eat. This is my body given for you. In the same way, he also took the cup on the table that was full of wine, and he said, this cup is the new covenant sealed in my blood, shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, you remember me. Do this in remembrance of me. So it is that every time here at Least Hope Church on the first Sunday of every month that we eat this bread and we also drink from this cup together, we are proclaiming the saving death of our risen Lord until he comes again. Amen. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for your goodness. And we do proclaim the saving death of our risen Lord. We do cry out to you, God, that you, you alone are the light of this world and the hope for this world. Father, even now, as there are so many areas on earth that are living in torment and war and battle, God, Father, we ask for the shalom, the Prince of Peace, to come to us, God. Father, we don't know when he will come again, but Father, we know in your great plans and your purposes for us, God, we trust in them. But until he comes again, we celebrate our risen Lord, the death and resurrection, God, and that you are the living God, not a dead one. And Father, we anticipate during this season of Advent, we look forward, God, to celebrating your birth and your coming again. We thank you for these gifts, the body of Christ and the blood of Christ, Lord, for the forgiveness of our sins. We thank you in Jesus' name, amen. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. We will have two stations. Um, if you can come forth and then take your elements and take it back to your seats and then wait and then we will all take it together.
Stand, let's all stand together and sing one more chorus, and then Pastor Q will come up and give the benediction. the benediction if there's anyone need some prayers if anyone wants to come and come to Christ Jesus we want to pray with you we invite you to come let's come to prayer Father we love and honor you for your grace we thank you for that salvation and hope eternal life that is in Christ Jesus we thank you for the divine grace that you grant us. We find in Christ Jesus. Oh, we love you, God. We ask today that your heart will be revealed to us in every way. We'll walk in your grace. Now, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, communion and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, God, be upon all who are gathered here. Be upon all who call upon the name of Jesus. Be upon the God's church from now until forever and ever. Amen.